Are you someone that has just heard of Obsidian and wanting to learn more? Have you looked around at other Obsidian tutorials on YouTube or online and found them to be complex, full of programming language that you didn't understand? Are you someone that needs to start with the absolute basics and get a kind of step-by-step tutorial as to how to get started with using Obsidian? Well, then you are in the right place as this is the first of a whole series of Obsidian videos that I'm gonna be creating, guiding you from how to go from being an absolute beginner to being someone that can use Obsidian to benefit your knowledge management system. And hey, if this is your first time to the channel, my name's Daniel Langlish. I love creating videos covering productivity, tech, and digital organization videos just like this one. So hey, if that if that interests you, make sure you click the like button below and subscribe to the channel as if you enjoy this video, I think you're gonna like a lot of the stuff that I put out. And before we get started, I wanna mention that any links, timestamps, or any other information will be down in the description below, so make sure you check that out. Now the first question you might be asking is, who is this series for? And my answer would be absolute beginners. There are plenty of other uh, YouTubers out there creating Obsidian videos that are way smarter than me. And if you if you are someone that's looking for more advanced Obsidian tutorials, this is not for you. This is for the absolute beginner. But if you are a beginner, I think you're gonna find these really helpful as I'm someone that's relatively new to Obsidian as well. I've only been using it for a few months now. I've been doing a lot of research, following a lot of tutorials, and I've learned a lot and, and become you know more comfortable with it. And I'm just looking in these videos to share the knowledge that I had to do lots of research for and, and speed up that process of you getting started and doing it in a really easy and clear to follow form. Format. And now the second thing you might be wondering is why should I use Obsidian? You know, maybe if you're using another note-taking system, why should you switch over to Obsidian? And I think there's a few reasons uh, that Obsidian is pretty compelling. Uh, the first one, and this is probably its you know best-known feature, is its backlinking. And we're going to dive more into this later. But essentially, backlinking. Uh, works a little bit like how our brains work. You know, our brains, we make these connections between things. You know, I see the clouds and I have this connection that, oh, it might rain. Uh, even though it's not raining right now, I have that connection made. And that's a little bit what backlinking in Obsidian is. You know, you learn all this information. You take notes on all these different things. And rather than your notes being isolated from one another, you can use backlinks to connect your notes and then create greater insights out of it. Now the second reason that I think you should use Obsidian is it is locally stored on your computer. And this is important for a couple reasons. First of all, it makes Obsidian super fast to use. Um, I've used other note-taking applications that are stored uh, online and you have to you know, use an internet connection. And the more your note-taking system grows, it starts to become slower and maybe gets a little, uh, takes some time switching between your notes. Um, since Obsidian is locally stored, it's as fast as opening up a file, you know? It's, it's instantaneous. Switching between your notes is super fast. And I think that's a huge, huge benefit. The second reason that I like that's locally stored is for privacy purposes. You know, you're not just trusting someone in the cloud with all your information that you've been taking. Instead, it's all locally stored. And, and there's ways you can back up that information. You know, I have it backed up through iCloud, but I love that it's, it's in my control and I don't have to worry if a service, you know, goes goes out of service that I'm gonna lose all my information. I have it all right here. And the last reason, and arguably the most compelling one, is Obsidian is free. It is completely free. They have a few tiers that you can pay for, but they're not to like get, you know, extra features or anything like that. It's more of a way to just support them for this application, but all the main features are free. They have an incredible community that is uh, promoting Obsidian and creating things for it. And so I really just think you might as well, you know, click on the link I've got down below. You can go download it for yourself and, and just try it out. But if you've already downloaded it, then let's jump into what getting started in Obsidian looks like. And so we've got this screen here and you know I've got my old vault uh, behind here, but we're gonna create a demo vault and kind of just walk through what you might be seeing right now. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to create a new vault. And it's gonna ask you, what do you want your vault name to be? I'm gonna say demo vault. And then it's gonna say, uh, where do you wanna store that vault? And this is just like store, this is where you're gonna store all your notes on your computer. 
So now I've got my vault on my desktop. And so we called it Demo Vault. And you'll see here, if I minimize, uh, we got here, there it is, Demo Vault. And so that'll be where all of our notes end up being stored. And notes in Obsidian are just markdown files. Um, they're just little files that are gonna be stored inside of that vault. And so let's head into our Demo Vault here. And I'm gonna put it full screen. And so this is kind of the layout of Obsidian when you get started. And so let's just dive into creating our first note. So if you wanna create a note in Obsidian, you've got a little option here, create new note. When you click that, it's gonna ask you to title it. I'm gonna say, this is my first note. And then you can go down here and so that's the name of it. And then you can you know type all sorts of stuff you want. But I want to, you to notice something of how kind of the storage of Obsidian works. If we minimize this and we open our demo vault, you'll now see in demo vault, we have a file called this is my first note. And so that is you know, kind of how the storage works. You can create folders within your vault and store things kind of that way. But like I mentioned, everything is stored on as a markdown file. And you may not be familiar with markdown. I'll actually be making a video about how to utilize markdown in the future. But the one thing you should know about it is it makes your notes super versatile. You know, you're not locked down to Obsidian as markdown is a language that's used by a lot of different applications. So your notes can easily, if you wanna move off Obsidian later, be exported and put into something else, which I think is a huge benefit. So now let's head back over to Obsidian. And so we've got our first note here. I love taking notes in Obsidian. There you go. You can do stuff like that. And you know, we can create more, create more notes. Um, you'll notice right next to creating a note, you can create a new folder. And that, like I mentioned, is a folder within your demo vault. You can name it whatever you want. First folder. And then within folders, you can drag a note into a folder. And now you'll notice we can store notes within folders. A nice little simple organization structure. So the next important thing I wanna show you is how to search your notes. Because as you grow your notes database, you're gonna eventually wanna be able to use your notes and search for various things. Well, up here, we've got a little search bar. And you can start just typing things to search. So let's, for example, I wanted to find this first note I made, you know, and maybe I remember that I typed obsidian in it. You'll notice it pulls up this note and says, I love taking notes in obsidian and it highlights it for me and whatnot. So the search is really powerful. I might make a video just dedicated to in the later, but you can search by the path of the file, the file name, by tags you give it, all sorts of stuff. The search is pretty powerful, but that's the search bar. So if you're ever trying to search for a note, there's where it's at. So now let's get into that thing that I mentioned earlier of what makes Obsidian so powerful, and that's creating links. And so to create a link in Obsidian, all you do, let's say I'm typing this for the first time. All you do, if you want to create a, a, a backlink for something is you double bracket and it'll kind of have this little pop-up. You could, Oh, let's type correctly. There you go. You can type whatever you want to type and then double bracket close. So those two brackets creates a link. And you'll notice it's a link because it's it turns purple. And so now I know that this is a link. So what this is doing is this has basically created a page that's connecting to this note. And if I hold command and click on this, you'll actually notice it opened a new page titled Obsidian. And if we go back to our file explorer, you'll see there's now this file type Obsidian. And so let's say we, you know, create another note within here. And maybe you're, you know, watching my YouTube videos. You're wanting to take note. Uh, let's title this notes on Daniel Languish's Obsidian videos. You know, it'd be great if you're taking notes on my videos. <laughs> um, and then, you know, in the notes here, Daniel says that Obsidian is a super useful app to use. But what we could do here is we could once again double bracket around Obsidian. And so we've got a couple notes that have Obsidian linked into it. Well, now if we go over to Obsidian here, you'll see nothing on the screen, but this is a really important thing is there's this little sidebar in Obsidian that you can click to expand. And you'll notice here, now it's saying linked mentions 
and unlinked mentions. And you'll notice under linked mentions, we have, it says there's two. These are the two notes that I just had. If you click on them, it's actually gonna take you to that note. And so linked mentions are telling you how many times, what are all the notes where you have created a link to the note that you're on Obsidian. So I have two notes where I put double brackets around and linked to Obsidian. Unlinked mentions are where else in your notes is the word Obsidian, but you didn't put a double bracket around it. And so the way I kind of think about this is like how strong is the connection? So if there's a really strong connection and you want every time you go to the note Obsidian to see these resources and links, you might put a double bracket. Whereas maybe if a little weaker connection, you know, uh, you could go and under unlinked mentions, see all the other times Obsidian is mentioned. And so just as an example, if you create another note um, and in here I could type, I love Obsidian so much. And you'll notice if we go back to Obsidian, you'll now notice under unlinked mentions, I love Obsidian so much is there because I didn't double bracket it. Now, when you create a double bracket around a word for the first time, it actually doesn't create the page yet. And so if I say, um, I am watching and you double bracket YouTube to learn about, and hey, well, you know, we'll double bracket again. You'll see it auto populates and boom. So it remembers the stuff that you've double bracket, it can make it kind of fast. Um, I am watching YouTube to learn about Obsidian. You'll notice that YouTube isn't a page yet. And one way you can see this, and this is another feature of Obsidian, is if we go over to our graph view. So our graph view is a graph of all the connections you've made in Obsidian. So anytime you see a line connecting two things together, that is a backlink that's connecting those things. So that means these notes have Obsidian backlinked uh, there's a connection between there. And this is super cool as it, you can start to see the main pillars that things are connecting to. Super, super cool. But you'll notice here, if you look in, it's a little small, but that there's these three notes that we created have connections to Obsidian, but this untitled note, since there is uh, no, there's no connection here yet, it is off on its own. And so that's kind of mentioning that unlinked mention. Uh, it's not linked to anything else uh, in our in our full, in our Obsidian uh, notes. And so if we go back to Obsidian, and you'll see here then if I hold command and I, this isn't a page yet, but you'll notice it says YouTube is not created, click to create. I've hold command and I click on it, suddenly it is created. The last thing I want to show you is switching between is this button up here that says click switching between previews. So normally when you're typing in Obsidian, you're going to be typing in Markdown, and that's kind of this format uh, that looks a little weird. You know, to make headings, you can do a hashtag and heading. If you want two headings, heading, you know, heading two. If you're not familiar with Markdown, don't worry. I will be making a video in the future diving into exactly how to use it. But you'll notice that your notes don't really like look that pretty in Markdown, right? They look kind of weird, they have all these symbols. Well, if you're done with a note and maybe you're just wanting to view it and use it in the future, you can switch to preview mode and you'll notice that then switches it from Markdown into a kind of a prettier format that's easier to look at. And you can then, you know, without holding command, you can just click on links and stuff like that and it'll take you to things. Um, but that's usually the format that I use when I'm actually viewing my notes as it's more pretty. And I think I saw in an update coming up, they're going to be making it so that you can actually edit in this view. You know, you don't have to go back to that kind of not as pretty markdown view. So that'll be a welcome update if that comes. And depending when you're watching this, it might already be out, who knows. But yeah, taking a step back here, you know, you might've kind of just learned a few things here and just, you can start to see why Obsidian is so beneficial. And I can speak personally as for a long time, I've taken notes on books, you know, you have maybe have class notes and all these notes are kind of in their own separate places. Maybe you have them in notebooks or maybe you, maybe you took digital notes, but they're here, but all your notes are kind of isolated. But what if, you know, you read a book on productivity and you take notes and you link that word productivity and then you are taking notes in a business class and you 
take notes and on something about productivity and you can link the notes from that class. And then when you're writing a research paper about productivity, well, you can just go to your link productivity and it'll have notes for everything that you linked productivity to, all your book notes, all your class notes, all the podcasts you've listened to, everything. Like it, it makes it so that all these things aren't just, you don't just take notes for the sake of taking notes and they're not useful anymore. It's making all the information that you're taking in actually be useful going forward as you can connect things together and organize them in a way where you can actually use them to create things going forward. And that should really be the goal of, of notes is not just you take notes for the sake of taking notes, but you take notes so that you can use them in the future and actually um, gain something out of them. And so, you know, if you're new to Obsidian, this might feel like a lot, but I recommend just get started. Just start taking some notes in Obsidian, start creating some links, you know. I can relate to the feeling of, a feeling like that you need to have your whole system be perfect before you get started. Know exactly how you're gonna do everything. And that's where you can get a little intimidated as you start to watch these Obsidian videos out there and it's crazy complex. And you're like, oh my gosh, I don't even understand what they're doing. But, but don't fall into that trap. Just start taking notes. And as we continue through this series, we're gonna te keep teaching you on how you can keep slowly leveling up those notes and creating a more unified system. And so get started and then come back to this channel and we'll, as we get into the next video in this series. But thanks for checking out the video for today. And hey, this isn't the first video I've made. Uh, if you're watching this in the future, the next video in this series is already out and it's linked right here and you can click on that. But if it's not out yet, you can, uh, or if you've, maybe you've already seen it, then you can also click right next to me and YouTube will suggest another video for my channel that it thinks you'll be interested in. But either way, thank you so much for tuning in today and I will catch you in the next one.